All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and today I want to talk about thinking outside the box and kind of add a little depth and perspective to some of the concepts that I've um, been discussing or, you know, ways of doing things that may not be the normal way that things are done. Things like not putting the exact same thing into multiple speakers, covering the same area, and also trying to keep sound separate, not taking them and mixing them all down to a unified stereo, you know, or mono, you know, trying to break up, there's a, you know, not taking every single instrument on stage and sending it to a single speaker or the exact same thing to two different speakers. I mean, we're sound engineers, we mix. And I've been talking a lot about not mixing, but maintaining or even going to double PAs, you know, and expanding with monitor systems, maybe having one monitor for vocals, another one for instruments, trying to break up. And to many people, these are, you know, controversial or uh, kind of outlandish thoughts or, you know, really looking at things from a different perspective. And I'd like to add some perspective to that. So in order to do so, I'm going to hopefully have something to visualize, try something to visualize uh, what I'm talking about. So when we have a band playing on stage, we have a bunch of different sources and I'm going to, let's say, make up these sources. I've got a bunch of little lights here and we'll, let's say this is one of the sources and then we've got another one. Let's say that's the kick drum. There's a the guitar. Uh, we could have a another guitar rig or a keyboard rig over here. Um, yeah, we have a flash and then we've got a vocal mic here. And maybe we've got um, cymbals up here. Is that on? Yeah. And some other instruments laying around the stage doing various things. So we've mic'd up our um, world here. And so this is kind of the real world of what we've got on the stage. You know, a bunch of sounds coming from different places and areas. Maybe this one's open up there. Um, then we as sound engineers, we have a main PA left and a main PA right. So what we do is we want to recreate that sound as a stereo system and there's our home hi-fi speaker or our PA speaker or what we've done. We've taken all those sounds and the whole concept of stereo is point source. We want to create a point source. We want to create a speaker, we get the woofer as close to the mid-range, as close to the tweeter, and have this unified source so we can have all our sounds showing up in the exact same spot. And then we want to do that and cover the room with the exact same thing. So we actually get two of these. Maybe we have another one over here full of others, full of the exact same thing that we have over here. That's how we reproduce audio. That's how stereo systems are built. Now, if we're doing surround sound, we might take this and a little miniature version of this and we take a few things out of the box and we put it over here and we take a few other things out of the box and we put it over here. These boxes of sounds and various um, sources is the fundamental by which we do this. And this outlandish concept of keeping things separate, of not putting the exact same in every, same thing in every speaker, is all I'm saying is, what if we don't do that? What if we don't put them all into a box, what if we maybe put these three into a box and these three into a box? So now we've got different adventures here. 
And then we do that, and then maybe on the other side, we remix them a little different. So they're coming up. In the natural world, we've got sounds coming from all different angles and spaces and trajectories. How are we able to recreate this? And maybe we have this as well. How are we going to recreate? That one's dead. How are we going to recreate this? by putting everything in there. How can we recreate the illusion of it? Now we might perceive sounds coming from different areas. We've put them into the speakers. We've put them into the two boxes. Let me get those boxes. We've taken all these various energy sources and we've loaded them up into our left-right stereo pair in order to simulate the real world, which is a three-dimensional adventure and we may be able to do a pretty good job of recreating that for a very narrow listening position or an area of listening positions but what we can't do is change the way that these sources reflect off the environment that they're in if we have all of these together, we put them all into here. Now, this recreation, the thing we've mixed, when the energy comes out of it, whether it's sound or light or whatever, it reflects off this surface here, that surface there, that surface above and below. It reflects in all of those angles. And if we're a listener st sitting here or standing there, the direct sound comes from here, and the reflected sound comes, and all of these trajectories are exactly the same for every single one of these energy sources. But the original scenario that we started with, with all of these spread out, well now, the energy from this comes at this angle and hits the listener, and reflects off there, but the energy from this comes from this angle and reflects off and comes from a different, and they all bounce off the room in different angles. They have different, almost like a flower of trajectories. Poof, this energy comes out, and poof, 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 bounces and hits. And this flower of energy, poof, 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 and then hits. And this flowers of energy, poof, 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 poof. and they all bloom in these different directions, and the listener experiences these energies reflecting off those surfaces, direct and indirect. And once we've put these into a single location, we've denied that experience. We can try and simulate the volumes and simulate what those reflections sound like. We can record those reflections and radiate them from here. But when they're radiated, they have new reflections in the venue or room that we're in that we can perceive that the sound is coming from that location. So then we perceive, oh, there's a bunch of recorded reflections emanating from that single source. One way to get around it is headphones. We could have all those directions and let's say record binaurally and have the sound of all those reflections show up in our ears and reproduce that and like, grab the sound right there at that point, and then reproduce it. For a three-dimensional environment, as long as we're piling all this stuff into a single point, doing things the right way, creating these point source, phase aligned, time aligned, perfectly coherent sound sources, in order to reproduce something, we cannot get to here from there. You can't get back. So I question whether or not a point source or a coherent sound source that's able to replicate this audio signal 
so perfectly. When you look at home hi-fi, it's about getting that point source phase coherence all dialed in to precision. But it's a lost, you may win those battles, but you've lost the war. You can't get there from here. Another way to look at it was what if we make speakers where the woofer is here and the mid-range is here and the tweeter is here and it creates issues and they're not phase and time aligned and they're not perfect. Is that better or worse than a coherent phase time aligned? Which is closer to the original scenario? A point source, which is a non-existent, unnatural thing that we've created as a goal, or having multiple sound sources with various sounds coming out of it, which parallels what the original environment we are trying to capture is. All right. Outlandish, absurd, thinking out of the box because I don't want to put it all in the box. All right. Hope you found that enjoyable and fun and thought provoking. Um, again, there's no right or wrong with this. It is purely to inspire some thought, to look at things differently and realize that we can actually achieve closer to natural sound by maintaining the quantity of sources instead of collapsing them down into a single point. It may be applicable for your scenario. It may be beneficial. It may not, depending on the application and the desired outcome. Cool, cool.